Um, Rob Johnson is the CBS news anchor. Um, so you see him at uh, 5 o'clock and 10 o'clock uh, every night. We were just talking about what a week, news week last week uh, was. And I was sharing with Rob, I kind of thought he was kind of like a neophyte because I was in Washington, D.C. when all this happened, you know. <laughs> and wow, that's, that's a story that you got to hear about. It was really something. But Rob, um, I know him best for his advocacy on, on behalf of his brother who lives in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, Rob's brother um, is another driving force, and a, he's, Rob is also um, a sib. I didn't know this, but do you know that, that, that Governor Quinn, one of our best friends who is in implementing the, the biggest expansion of community services in Illinois that I've seen in my career, no, in my life, um, proclaimed a Rob Johnson day here in, in Illinois. So well done, uh, Rob Johnson. <laughs> Rob is very active in uh, ending the R word. Um, um, he talks about it uh, on a, his broadcast. I had the pleasure of being uh, interviewed for him when the campaign first uh, began many, many years ago. And he's joined by his lovely wife, Stacy, today. We're honored to have you today. And we want to recognize, hey! So we're honoring him for his distinguished work with the ARCS um, Media Excellence Award. Rob, congratulations. Well, let me just say what an honor it is uh, to be here uh, in front of you all again. And I was reminded that I was at this conference eight years ago. Uh, it was the night before my wife gave birth to our one and only child. And I told Janet, if she's not in labor, I'll be here. <laughs> and I showed up that night. And we said, what was that, four or five years ago? I'm like, that was eight years ago. And uh, we're, we're so lucky to have that little guy. But, I, what I'm most impressed about is since I started doing this, since I realized I really had a voice, I mean, my entire career, which is over 20 years now, I've been doing uh, disability awareness in some form or fashion, but it wasn't until probably eight or nine years ago when somebody at my former station, uh, WLS, uh, said the R word on the air uh, inadvertently that I just, it really, it was a wake-up call for me. and. I remember people saying, you know, they should fire her. They should get rid of her for saying that. And I said, no way. They shouldn't get rid of her. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. What we need to do, what I need to do, what everybody needs to do is educate her. Yes. So that's kind of how it started. I went to my boss, my then boss, Emily Barr, and I said, you know, I'm going to write an op-ed piece in the Tribune about this very, you know, this very thing. And I'm not going to name who it is. That's not important right now. And she said, knock yourself out, go for it. And so I wrote an op-ed piece. And after that, it just started turning into its own little cottage industry for me, really, because school districts started calling and various schools and disability groups. And they wanted me to speak in front of them. And I realized, OK, I have a voice. And I have a pulpit, too. And I have a microphone on every day. And people actually listen. And sometimes. Not that we don't try to do good by people on a daily basis, but sometimes I can have a real impact. And that's when I realized the power of what I do. And if I use it in a way that's meaningful, that helps advocate for people that don't have a microphone, that don't have a bully pulpit, then maybe I can do something special. And so that's been the journey for me. And I know that we're all on this journey together. And I'm, I just want you to know that I'm here and, and, and I'm fully supportive of everything that goes on. And the SIBS group, too. I was commenting to Katie and a few other folks, uh, Janet, b beforehand. I don't think until I went to the SIBS conference, what, three years ago or something, I don't think I'd ever spoken to a sibling of somebody not only who had Down syndrome, like my brother Edward, but somebody who had a disability. I don't think I ever did that until that conference. And I thought, what a great way to bring people together, to share ideas, to share a common experience. And so I just want to congratulate all of you who are so involved in this, because it's so important. And what it does is it gives 
um, a little swagger, a little power. You realize you're not in this yourself. It's, it's hard to go out there when I say, go out there, and when somebody says the R word, say, you can't say that. It's offensive. I mean, I have so many different arguments for why you shouldn't say it, and I'm not going to you know, tell you them here. You may have already known. I mean, it's, first of all, it's, it's offensive, first, and, and then there are words that we would never utter in front of a public crowd, and, and these words should be part of that, too. And then I've also tried with the kids that you don't sound very educated. You know, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, go, to a cl I'll go to a school, you know, like, Maybe it's sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And I'll say, you know, there'll be three, four hundred kids out there. Hey, who thinks they're smart? Every kid raises their hand, right? <laughs> and I said, you know what happens when you say that word? When you say those words, you really don't sound smart. You actually sound stupid. You actually sound like you don't know how to express yourself. So I've tried everything I can do, and I know that you all do that too. The point I'm trying to make is you go out there, it's not easy. It's a little uncomfortable to do that, but it's important to do that. And it's important to give people who don't have a voice, a voice. And that's why I do what I do, because I think it's so important. And I think it honors my brother in a way that he has no idea. Um, he has no idea that I do this, and that's fine. My parents do. They know it's very important. And um, I just want to commend all of you for the hard work that you do. And sometimes it feels like nobody's paying attention or maybe it's not mattering, maybe it's not putting a dent in this whole thing where we get people to change their opinions about people with disabilities. But I can tell you that it is. I can tell you that when you have a conference like this and we're here at lunch and you have an overflow crowd, that's a good problem for Tony and Janet and everybody to have, right? Um, so I would just, I just wanna say what an honor it is to get this award. And I wanna thank all of you for being on the journey with me. And, and I was telling uh, some folks earlier that, that my wife, Stacy, married into this. You know, so she's, she's on the journey as well, happily on the journey. In fact, uh, Edward will call uh, the house sometimes and politely talk to me just so he can talk to Stacy. <laughs> that's really all he wants to do. And I'm not even, I'm not even that offended by it. So <laughs> um, anyway, it's a great honor. And I just say, let's go out there. We're mobilizing. You have the SIBS group. You have all these other various groups that are making people more aware of what's going on. And that's the part of education. If people don't know, they're not responsible for what they don't know. But once people know, they're responsible for that knowledge. And that's when you can touch their hearts. So thank you all. I want to thank the Arc of Illinois so much, Tony, uh, for being a, a friend for so many years. And uh, I will continue my work. And I hope you all do too, and God bless you all.